All right, Paul Efty here talking about leadership philosophy. We want to go into part two, and it's specifically now looking at ethics, ethics in sport. Let's take a look. So ethical standards. I would argue there's only three kinds of ethical standards, meaning there's no secrets anymore. It's either high or low, or there's none at all. Um, today's day and age with social media, um, there really are no secrets, and that's a big change from some of the leaders of the past. Your definition of ethical is conforming to accepted professional standards and conduct. So if you're unsure what we're talking about here, hopefully that gives you a good foundation. Another way to look at this is, I love this quote from Charlie Fisher. He was the Penn State coach with uh, Bill O'Brien um, years ago. Got to meet with him and he said, quote, we have an inherent ability to know the difference. All right, so first off, when we're talking about ethics and sport, let's go examine your definition of sportsmanship versus gamemanship. So pause the video here and just write out what would be your definition of sportsmanship and what would be your definition of gamesmanship. And then try to write, think about, is there a difference or are they the same or similar? Next one is then give a definition of character. And then from that, start to dis, uh, your first draft for your definition of ethics in sport. All right, now that you've done the workshop and just again brainstorming, we want to look at what is sport ethics and different ways to look at it. A um, great way to look at it is just observing the rules of that particular game or sport, behaving according to the true spirit of the game, and then more importantly, just some unwritten rules of that game. So there's two different results when we start to look at um, ethics and sport. There's sportsmanship, and for the course, we'll just simply talk about this as providing good character uh, when participating in the sport. And what I like about this is it talks about respect for opponents, officials, teammates, coaches, anybody in the game itself. Gamesmanship is where you are violating the spirit of the game. In other words, you're doing something to upset or psych out the opponent in order to win. That's called gamesmanship. So we'll just use those as kind of our foundation as we go through the course. When we talk about character versus personality, I'm sure we've many of us have heard this, but a character is who you are. It's what you stand for. I like that. Again, this is the difference in intrinsic and an extrinsic motivation where People with high character are intrinsically or internally motivated to do the right thing because that's what they want their legacy to be. So personality is what you do when people are looking. It's more extrinsic and character is what you do when nobody's looking. I'll give you a great example from recruiting at the college level. I would go into a high school, meet with a recruit, have a great talk, great experience. Everything's glowing, the resume. And then you go talk to the office administrator, you talk to a janitor, you talk to um, a teacher um, and find out really what that person is like when they don't think anybody's watching them under the scope as a uh, recruiting student athlete. As I mentioned earlier, I think it's important to use uh, value terms to help act as keywords and guides for people in your organization, but we want to make sure they understand the definition of those. Uh, we talked about trust earlier. Next one is respect, and that's simply just the worth of someone regarding or showing worth for someone. Responsibility, then, is an extension of respect. It means you value individuals and you show that through your actions, meaning you just simply care for each other. Real powerful in a team organization and just developing a quality culture is to have that respect, but also then understand you have a responsibility in that extension of respect everyone on the team some principles of character i like to look at these as your kind of your moral values and just can act as then guides on what you ought to do so the true two great moral values can serve as your foundation then is once we understand the definitions of respect and responsibility is that you can promote then the good of the individual and the good of the whole community. Responsibility then is to provide those positive obligations to care for each other. Great team culture um, 
concept of using principles of character and having some moral values. So one of the big things with dealing with uh, ethics is how do you teach that as a leader? And again, research shows ethical behavior is not just inborn, it needs to be taught. So part of our responsibility as leaders is to help them understand what is acceptable, what isn't acceptable, and help develop those moral values. A good example of how to teach that as a uh, our college football coach, we would do our conditioning, like most programs, you do some conditioning, and you say everybody behind the line and you're gonna take off and run. Well, you would have numerous people that would be on the line or over the line. Um, so instead of telling them that they had to get back before we went, just get disciplined in them, we would actually ask our leaders to kind of create an environment where they would communicate to make sure we all are behind us. And once that was developed, then you start to create this self-discipline. And now we start to have that moral conduct that we're trying to, to um, develop as leaders for everybody in our organization. Another great example on how to teach ethics is please research and study John Wood. He used this pyramid of success. And you can see at the bottom are different um, uh, traits and values that he felt were important that build towards the top to what he calls competitive greatness. Great example, um, great research uh, source for you as you try to develop your ethics philosophy and how you would develop people. Um, another example, example number two of how to teach ethics is Pat Summit, uh, former Tennessee women's basketball coach we mentioned in uh, Role Models. Again, she talked about developing self-discipline and selflessness so you would have great team ethics. She did this uh, versus the pyramid. She did what was called a definite dozen, these 12 key traits to build an ethical uh, team culture. I love uh, number six, make hard work your passion. So again, great resource. All right. It's time to start to workshop the, all this information and start to apply it to your coaching portfolio. We wanna do a design clinic where you look at the good and the bad. So to do the research on wooden, the style and ethics, it's a good example in the summit, but then start to design a code of ethics for your program, kind of your ethical standards. Make sure then again, you start by first providing your definition of ethics and sport using your own words, your definition, that's the thesis statement, then citing a reference from a credible source like Wooden or Summit, doesn't have to be them, but it can be any one even from your personal experiences, which are called personal communications. And then lastly, giving a concrete illustration of how you're gonna make that happen. Again, I use the example of um, everybody being behind the line and having your leaders kind of police that, so to speak, um, to make that a transformational situation. So pause the video and write these down. Again, you'll use these in um, writing of your portfolio. All right, another great uh, research source is to look outside of your particular sport, sport and role models of sport and look at organizations that are successful. Uh, Penn State Smeal Business School is a great one right here. And they use a honor code um, you can see where they talk about in the red, aspire to the highest ethical standards and we will hold each other accountable to them. We intend to hold to this standard in our future careers. Kind of a statement. They talk about aspirations, live up to, some great action terms here, accountable, accountability, fair and ethical means, leaders of tomorrow, and you wanna enhance your organization's brand or reputation or your legacy. Great examples of how you can write up your ethics, standard ethic codes definition. Some challenges with this is, uh, with ethics is that people come from different backgrounds and experiences and have different views. So as a leader, you need to be pretty open and inclusive, but that at the end of the day, you need to be fair and make sure you provide examples of people who of what clearly is acceptable and unacceptable behavior. Some examples it would just be social negative background, um, just kind of the culture you grew up in outside of sport, your family, your neighborhood, where you 
in an urban area versus rural ethnicities, all those different things. So think of all the different examples of the organization you're going to be working with and making sure you're aware of those as you start to define ethics for your group as a leader. Another one is competition. And it's a part of life. Um, everybody can have a different focus on it. But again, it's important here when we go back to motivation, it's about creating a fun environment and everybody having a sense of self-worth. And my argument would be when winning becomes a sole purpose in the eye of a competition, it can be a dangerous piece. Um, there's kind of an interesting twist of Pat Summoner's son went on to be a coach and actually uh, you can do some research, um, had an affair and kind of disgraced his mother's legacy. So it's not so easy. It goes back to that thing. It's just not inborn. It's something that has to be taught, has to be learned, and the person has to, uh, to embrace it. And that's the last part is we can learn a lot about ethics from bad examples. Um, so just as uh, researching cheating, a good example is Lance Armstrong, um, cyclist through uh, a drug scandal, EPO scandal. Again, look at the quick video here. It's about two minutes, but it's where him talking about um, his cheating and dishonesty and what he learned from it and what we could learn from that and apply that to our coaching. Some ethics and coaching questions here. And these are things you need to answer. Again, starts with, and this is why we did this first before we went into our definition of ethics is, what is leadership to you? Have a clear definition of that, and then design what is ethics and sport to you. And then you wanna talk about why it's important, how you can deal with it, but more importantly then, when you should deal with it. Some moral character definitions at the end again, Moral, it's just replating, relating to the principles of right or wrong, and we are capable of right and wrong action. Character then is the complex of mental and ethical traits marking a person or a group. So one more workshop here, teaching character, how to do this, that's the key part. It's easy to come up with a definition inside reference, but how are you gonna create a moral team environment? Come up with some strategies for that. How would you model moral behavior? And we've given you some great role models. How could you teach ethical decision-making? And then lastly, how are you gonna motivate your players to develop good merit moral character? Write these down. These are all gonna be illustrations in your TRI when you start to look at your ethics definition and probably the most important, how you're gonna develop it in your program. Once again, just give you an example of my definition of ethics and sport. Uh, it's to live and lead using the higher moral value system as a guide. So it's based on these value terms. Honesty, number one, full disclosure. That's the fairness that we're trying to develop. We want to actually develop then trust. That creates that belief in others, but also then we start to have fun. And then through respect of individual differences, and that's done through forgiveness because we all have flaws in our in our life um, we can start to respect each other that way this way we can create a positive nurturing team culture for everyone and trust me you're going to be tested individually and as a leader both the key here is to have a plan of how to go forward and how to deal with that so that you can endure and evolve